Alright guys, in this tutorial, I have made a weather script, and we have rain and snow currently, and you can take this way farther than I'm going to in this tutorial. Uh, it's just a lot more of enabling and disabling things, and you can create materials that will uh, make things appear to be wet or have snow on them. I am not doing any of that, I'm just making the rain and the snowfall. So, I made a... Uh, I made an empty object with a particle system, right? And here are the things I enabled. I have the render, which is kind of important because if you don't have that, you can't see anything. Uh, I made a custom material for the raindrop. And it's nice to use something that's transparent. And then just put like, uh, just put, uh, you know, I'll just show you. Oh, crap supposed to be transparent so you can see through it somewhat as you can see by that raindrop right there makes it look kind of neat um, you're never gonna notice that when it's playing like that you have a mission and I set it up to run 400 of them at a time but when this isn't running just look at the difference when it's not running it's running over way over a thousand frames per second I don't know why it's updating right now either because uh, we're not in play mode but as soon as you enable rain it drops to a few if maybe only a couple hundred frames per second like what I have uh, obviously the less you do the better it'll run for the shape you want to do a box and this is our box here if you can see that light blue line and that's the area where they can spawn and I did 10 in front and 10 behind or like um, or 20 by 20 yes yeah, so 10 in front 10 behind 10 to the left 10 to the right that way if you run in any direction it will uh, they'll still appear in front of you and looks like it'll look like it's around you and what I should have actually done is just put this in front of me and made it take up half the space to get better frame rate, which I'll probably do in the future. Not going to worry about it right now. And then we have uh, li limit velocity over time. I didn't really do anything with that, so I mean, it won't make any difference to turn it off. Um, collision. So. I uh, I made it collide in world space, and the co collision quality is high. I don't know what that actually means. Um, but what I did here, I enabled dynamic colliders. I made it bounce twice, so maybe if I make that bounce once, didn't seem to make a difference on the frame rate. But I like it bouncing twice. I guess it's dampened. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about particle systems. Oh! That looks kind of cool. You can exert a force. So you could do like 0 0.001 or something and make objects move. Um, I set that back to 0. It's just rain. I'll do something with that in the future though, probably. And again, the renderer, I set a raindrop material. I made it spheres, so it looks pretty neat like that. I mean, all you can do is just, if you want to make raindrops that look like this, which don't even look that good, and it's horrible in performance, um, you can just copy what I'm showing you here. I made them cast shadows, so you turn off receive shadows the frame rate already got better cast shadows off that is so much better look how much the frame rate went up um wonder if oh I like it casting shadows but I might change that in the future 
I'll just leave it like that for now. Or maybe I'll do it based on quality settings. Um, so that's the rain. And the snow is set up in the same exact way, except... Where is it? What did I do different? Oh, it's under this. So this is set up exactly the same, except... I made the start size instead of 0 0.08, I made it 0 0.05. So they were, it was harder to see that it was spheres. And I also changed the gravity mod modifier from 0.5 to 0.8. And both of them are simulated in world space. I'm sure doing local space helps. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> 90, right around 90. Apparently it does better in world space. And uh, the difference there, whenever you're moving, uh, they'll come towards you or move away from you based on the direction you're moving. Which I think looks really, uh, really cool and it kind of helps out with uh, making it look like you're actually walking through the snow. But if you take a look at this, over here it's not snowing, it's only snowing here. So, obviously this is lifted above you. You could uh, put this closer to the ground, and since I have them set to destroy on collision, um, if this was a lot closer to us, which you could probably tell from the camera view if you, you looked up, it's going to disable this. Yeah, I knew we'd get clear weather. Um, it could make it like obvious that they're spawning right above you. We'll change the weather type to not 14. We'll make it snow. You can see them spawning from here, but I'm sure if you added a little bit of fog or whatever, whenever it's snowing, because that's a that's a feature in Unity. I don't even know how to access it anymore. <laughs> it used to be really easy. I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's somewhere in this lighting setting or something. It could you could really hide where they're uh, being generated and bring it a lot closer to you and get a lot better frame rate than I am but yeah that's that's the basics on um, I gotta show you the script so I made four variables weather timer which once that reaches zero um, is it counts down one at a time once it reaches zero resets itself to a different time and since it'll do one less than the uh, highest digit when you do random dot range at, at the max, uh, this is basically like seeing 0 through 10. So for this, if it's between 0 and 4, it'll set everything to false. If it's between 5 and 7 here, it'll rain. If it's between 8 and 10, it'll snow. That's how you uh, set them active. Um, that's how you set game objects as active. You used to be able to do dot enabled. You have to do set active now. Um, yeah, it'll choose a weather type when it runs out of time. And I set my two game objects here, and that's how I was able to do dot set active on them. And that's all there really is to it. So as you can see, when we're playing under the game manager, we have this timer, and it could be as much as 600 seconds, which is 10 minutes. Um, but once it hits zero, it'll choose a different weather type. And one thing I might change in the future, once you disable one of them, which you'll see when we get to zero, Alright, we're still in snow, obviously. If you disable it, it just disappeared. And that's not what you necessarily want. You want it to just slowly stop 
and then disappear. But yeah, I don't know. That's uh that's all there really is to it. It's very simple. And in the future, if you guys would like me to, I'll find a way to make some uh um to adjust these uh materials. So if you have one on your ground for like white for example. I think it's under a detail mask. I think whatever you put on that covers up what you have. Huh. I don't know. Put the raindrop on it. Can't see the raindrop. It's one of these. I know uh, the albedo will give you your basic look, or you can set it by color, and then your metallic is basically this, except it's not the whole thing, it'll give you specific spots. And then um, your normal map is like little details like bumps and edges, but still in the 2D. Uh, 2D texture, which is actually pretty sick. You can make it look like it's 3D when it's 2D. On um, the height map, I think it does something similar. But I'll never know, I guess. Occlusion. Not even going to bother. Detail mask, I don't, I really don't know. Maybe you have to have an albedo setting first. But yeah. We'll learn to do that with the ground later on if you guys would like me to. Uh, see you in the next tutorial.